The International Renewable Agency demonstrates in a new report how renewable energy not only helps sustainable solutions, but can also help aid the recovery from the COVID situation. Our project manager, Anne Ekern, talked to Director General of IRENA, Francesco La Camera, this week. Director General Francesco La Camera, it is a pleasure and an honor to have you join us for the ONS 2020 Digital. IRENA, the organization that you lead, work to support countries to transition to a sustainable energy future. What was the momentum of renewables pre-COVID and has that changed at all with the pandemic? Uh, you know, the, the energy transformation was already in place before the outbreak of the pandemic. Uh, in the last eight years, the installed capacity of renewables has been systematically outpacing the installed capacity of conventional fossil fuel plants and unconventional fossil fuel plants. In 2019, 72% of installed capacity were from renewables. So before the pandemic, the trend was perfectly clear. We were going to the decarbonization carbonization of our energy system, our society. The fact was that we were going too slowly. So what's happened with the pandemic? First of all, we noticed, and these are just number, the, the renewables has been shown to be uh, the most resilient way to produce energy. We have seen everywhere in the world that the share of renewables in the electricity generation mix has been growing up during the pandemic and coal and gas, they went down. And this is because uh, renewables are more easy to, to, to operate. So in our point of view, what the pandemic is showing is very clearly that uh, renewables are not only the most clean way to produce energy, but also the most resilient way to produce energy. Our recent report on cost also showed that renewables are the most convenient way to produce energy. This is the reason for having this, uh, this trend. Uh, we have uh, assessed that next year, 1,200 gigawatts of coal plant will be more operate more costly if we are just going to substitute that generation with new renewable plant. So the fact is that the trend was, and the trend still is, that renewables are the most convenient, clean, and social acceptable way to produce energy. Thank you very much. Very interesting and optimistic perspectives. We understand that the cost picture is very important to this as well. In a recent analysis and report presented by IRENA, IRENA quantified how energy transition investments actually can provide a very effective stimulus to growth and also trigger private investments, who will be very important in the current situation with recession economic downturn. Would you kindly elaborate and provide some figures to illustrate how this can happen? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the numbers show very clearly the efforts that uh, we have to engage to accelerate uh, the path to a cleaner energy system. And in fact, the uh, intervention of the state in the economy due to the response to the COVID is offering a unique opportunity opportunity to accelerate this path. We make clear that if you want to be consistent in the, with the medium and long-term objective of the Sustainable Development Agenda and the Paris Agreement, we need to double our efforts in terms of investment. 
we have quantified that we need two trillion investment per year in the next three years, so in the very short term. And we need to go for an average of 4.5 trillion investment in the decade to be in line with the, with the medium long term of our objective. So our analysis was emphasized. How important is to link the short term response with the medium long term perspective of having a decarbonized uh, energy system and the decarbonized economy. This is uh, uh, absolutely relevant and the fight and the response to the COVID could be also a way to treat at the same time the response to the pandemic and uh, trying to find a way to, to fight more efficiently the, the climate change. So these are more or less the number of term of investment. But we want also to make clear is that it's not just a question of uh, a technological choice, but also we need policies to get the best from the transition also or social and economic term. We have uh, estimate assessed that uh, with this investment in the triennium, we will see the GDP growing 1.1% per year. And we have seen that in the triennium, the, the net uh, job creation will be more than 4,400,000 jobs created. And this will be in the decade going for an average of 1.3 contribution to the, to the GDP and having 15 million more jobs in the, in the energy transition area. So these are the numbers that show how convenient and uh, ethically and socially acceptable is going for, for renewable in this decade. Very interesting. And as a short follow up, you're saying that this will take effort from the industry, but also from governments. Based on signals and what we see out there, are you fairly optimistic that we may reach a lot of this? We have, uh, uh, we have registering mixed signal, uh, but we still think that uh, the government and the end, they will move to the right direction. I think that one good uh, example that we can showcase is the efforts in the European Union, where they are saving the new Green Deal idea that was uh, coming before the, the pandemic, and they are trying to be coherent and maintain the Green Deal, uh, saying very clearly that there is no growth, economic growth, if the growth is not green. So this could be an important sign. We have seen uh, many in many countries, uh, South Korea, Chile, Canada, and others that uh, they are moving in the right uh, direction. So naturally, we are not uh, yet there, uh, but we have to work everyone to, to get there as, as soon as possible and link this uh, response, the short term response to the medium long term that's uh, of the Paris Agreement, the sustainable development agenda. Thank you very much for sharing interesting perspectives on what it will take to get there. Whilst working towards a decarbonized system by 2050, what will the energy mix likely look like? 10 years from now, this may be asking you to look a bit into the glass bowl because, of course, a lot can change between now and then. We are trying to uh, design a, a possible path to get to 2050. And uh, in our recent, uh, the most recent report, the, the agenda uh, post COVID 19, we made clear that uh, we have to go from a share of uh, the, the power generation that is around. 20, a little bit more than uh, than 20 percent uh, today's concerning renewables going to uh, more than 55 percent in 2030 and going to 88 percent in the in the share of the electricity produced by renewables in 2050. This means that total total energy consumption has to go up to more than 65 percent from now to 2050. And we made also an estimate on, uh, on uh, how much needed in terms of investment. 
uh, we have uh, in our global renewable outlook, the, our energy transformation publication, we made clear that so we have two possible scenarios. One to go for uh, the 70% of CO2 reduction, that means more or less going with uh, in line with the well below two degrees of the Paris Agreement. And we need 95 trillion investment from now to 2050. And we need um, another. Uh, 15 trillion, so if you want to go for a, a full decarbonized system in the period of uh, from 2050 to 2060. So you may find the report, uh, the, the numbers and the way to get uh, to get that is important. And the policies that has to be uh, put in place to ensure that uh, uh, everyone can enjoy the, the, the benefits of going for uh, a more uh, a cleaner energy system and that uh, means jobs yeah, more gdp but means also to build an industrial uh, policy that is in line to provide the, the necessary support for going green in the next years it's very fascinating to hear how this can contribute to sustainability in several ways from a global perspective in what ways do you think the global energy markets will look different coming out of the current situation? What we can uh, see that uh, without uh, uh, decreasing the share of uh, international trade, uh, I think that uh, country and region will try to build a most resilient uh, system that will be going from global to regional naturally maintaining the links in the international trade, but uh, to build resilience at the regional level, this uh, could be important also for the developing of renewables, where interconnected grids, smart grids, flexible grids uh, may, may provide the right infrastructure uh, to have more renewables uh, in, into, the energy, into the energy system. So as far as we under, we may understand that, that uh, we will go for a, a building a more resilient system at, uh, at, uh, at the regional or domestic level. So going forward, what do you predict to be the largest challenges with regards to the energy market? I think that what is the major challenge is that uh, we adopt uh, policies that are coherent with uh, the agreed, globally speaking, goals of the medium term as the Sustainable Development Agenda in 2030 and the Paris Agreement 2050 and the end of the century. So what is important is the consistency of domestic policies to this, because uh, it's very easy to understand that the money uh, and the industry will go where the policies will show the way. So what is important, uh, first of all, is to build the right policies and uh, concerning renewables, we see as priority the infrastructure. So going for energy infrastructure that will be more digitalized, more smart, more interconnect, more flexible, and uh, where the, the electrification of the energy system will grow until the covering uh, how much uh, can be covered by the electrification and we can use new way of produce electricity also through hydrogen and green hydrogen mainly to decarbonize the system that are very difficult uh, to uh, decarbonize economically through the electrification the pure electrification of the system uh, through renewables so we will have a one third of what uh, and use sector as a long shipping, as the heavy industries, where we have to find new way for the electrification of uh, th those sectors. And where green energy, in our, in our opinion, could play an important role. Unfortunately, unfortunately for the time being, green hydrogen, hydrogen is produced by, by conventional uh, fuel, and we have to go for, uh, for green. So policies to, to, to build a market for green hydrogen could be important. And this will be a way to electrify also the sectors that are very difficult to electrify as heavy industries and long, uh, long shipping. Thank you very much for sharing very interesting perspectives on the new ways of working and on the use of new technologies, creating a lot of challenges, but also a lot of opportunities. Regretfully, we have to wrap up what has been a very interesting 
conversation and I wanted to end on a positive note and a positive question. What do you see as the greatest opportunities within energy? Do you think even that our mindsets may have changed somewhat and that there may be an even stronger push towards a green energy future, both by the public and by governments? Naturally, this is our point of view. These are facts and also our hopes that uh, the crisis show very clear that we have to uh, fight climate change all together. It is important that uh, we join in this efforts, the richest countries or the developed world, but also the developing one. We have to build a way where uh, international trade can uh, uh, give the chance for the poorest country to enjoy the benefits of going for uh, a cleaner energy system. We are still uh, hundreds of millions of people that are without access to electricity and the only way to provide electricity to them in a way that is consistent with the Paris Agreement goal is uh, through the auto grid or the self-standing grid system. So I think it's important that uh, also the pandemic showed that how is important is cooperation, how much important solidarity, how much is important for uh, going for a system, the energy system, the economy that are more resilient and the way to go, there is, it is just a fact, it's not my opinion, is going for renewables. Thank you so very much again, Mr. Francesco La Camera. It's been a great pleasure speaking to you and hearing all of your interesting perspectives. Thank you so much. Ciao, ciao.